All right, now that we've created a simple supply chain by combining the four supply chain objects, being products, facilities, vehicles, and routes, now let's take a look at a little bit more involved supply chain. We use the Cincinnati Seasoning Supply Chain, which comes from the library of case studies. And as we see that supply chain, let's take a look at some of the features that we can use to make this more detailed, more accurate, more realistic, depending on what you want to do with your model. If you look at the supply chain facilities, you basically have three main types, warehouses where fa product is stored, factories where product is made, stores where product is consumed. Of course, you can create facilities that combine features of all three of these and you do that when you talk about demand. Maybe a factory has demand for one product in order to make a second product. That's entirely up to you in the way you want to model your supply chains. The quantity on hand, again, you make those judgments. Make sure that you continue to increase your storage capacity as you increase your quantity on hand. Take a look at daily operating costs. Look in the real world. Do the research. Go out to the internet and do some searching. Find out what a factory of this size making these kind of products would cost. Maybe you want to break your costs into a standard cost per cubic meter of storage space and then have different standard costs for your different kinds of facilities. Have one cost for warehouses, maybe a higher cost for factories, and maybe a third cost for stores. That's entirely up to you. Discuss this with your professor if you're using this in a class. But again, what you see is the model can be as specific and as accurate as you want to be. The vehicles here when you look at the kinds of vehicles that can be defined, we have four different kinds of vehicles, trucks, trains, ships, and airplanes, depending on the way you define a vehicle. If we had said that there was an airplane going from Cincinnati to Columbus, the route would have drawn as a straight line because airplanes draw, go in a straight line. If we were going across oceans or big lakes and we said that it was a ship, it would also go in a straight line and then you can drag and drop the route to make it uh, go around islands or however you might want to modify that. When you take a look at routes, make sure that you always associate them with vehicles. When you have vehicles, make sure you always associate them with facilities. Now, when you've got a supply chain that you like, click on the simulation button and a new tab will open and you'll be able to simulate the application of this supply chain design and start to see how it will perform in the real world. Click on the play button to start that simulation and then what you'll see is information starts to appear for all of the facilities. You can click through different facilities you can start to see how much is on hand you can see the kind of costs that are being incurred day by day in the different facilities when you look at things like in the in the seasonings distribution center you can see that product is being consumed as it is being shipped out to the stores so there's a lot here when you finally run into a situation which causes the supply chain to to stop, as in right now we ran out of product in our Indianapolis store, then simply click on the tab and go back to your design view and start to look at ways that you could modify the on-hand product. It said, for instance, we ran out of product. All right, I have two options. I could put more on hand, or another thing I could do is I could make larger or more frequent deliveries to this store from the DC. These are the things that you start to investigate as you get more and more into it. Once you tweak a design here, then go back to your second tab where you have your simulation open. Click on the screen refresh to make sure that you have included now any modifications that you made when you 
tweak your supply chain design and then click again on play and away you go and this is how you start to through a process of discovery fine-tune the design of your supply chain the key here in the long run is to figure out how to make your supply chain to run 20 to 30 days and then make it run 20 to 30 days at the lowest operating cost and the lowest amount of on-hand inventory. That is the challenge of any supply chain manager.